Glory to Jesus Christ. Slava Jesusu Christu. Welcome to part seven of this explanation of the Divine Liturgy and Anthology for Worship. Today, uh, I'm going to flesh out um, a, a dimension of this book that, as I've mentioned in the past, is constantly uh, a, um, a subject of discussion, sometimes very intense discussion, and that is the whole question of setting the text to music. Okay? So I've already hinted at some of the issues. Today, to make sure that we have a, a better sense of, of what's at stake here, uh, I want to, to deal with this by using uh, another uh, example. And I will actually do this from time to time as we proceed through the, the Divine Liturgy, uh, in particular the uh, Sunday and Festal setting uh, for the Divine Liturgy. So, um, as I've hinted in the past, it's, it's a real challenge to get a perfect fit between an English translation and a melody composed originally for church Slavonic. The interesting thing is sometimes even in, in, in church Slavonic uh, there were problems, but uh, you can imagine how difficult this becomes once you take a melody composed for one language and try to, as it were, impose it onto a translation that uh, was not necessarily done with a view to the musical text. Now, this is a, an interesting question that we're going to get to in the future. I'm going to point out, uh, once we get to the propers, to some of the tropadia, how our group actually tried to customize the translation for the particular tone. Okay, that's you know something you want to hear. This is this is a fascinating example of uh, a certain kind of creativity, which nonetheless involved accurately translating the original Greek slash Church Slavonic. So it's an accurate translation, and yet it was customized in such a way that it would fit, for example, the tone 5 tropadion melody or the tone 3 tropadion melody, but that's running way, way uh, ahead of ourselves. Okay? So um, at this point, before I give you a, a concrete example from the uh, Sunday and Festal uh, musical setting, uh, I want to stress how it's really important to read the text. Read the text in English and ask yourself which words are stressed and which syllables within those words are stressed. Okay? And uh, as I've mentioned before, the musical accents have to match the verbal accents. Now, you may not understand what I mean by musical accent, so I'll, I'll get back to that later on, but you all understand what a, a verbal accent is. In other words, we say syllable and not syllable, right? Uh, we say holy and not holy. Uh, and then there's the whole question of a word within a sentence. You can usually tell who's not a native speaker because they end up stressing the, uh, the insignificant words in, in a sentence. Now, um, let's then go to a, a, a concrete uh, example. Um, and I'm going to ask Janet to flash up on the screen the, the PDF of page 106 from your Divine Liturgy and Anthology for Worship. And the text that we read there, let's just first read the text. And remember that the, the meaning within the text is carried by words that are more important and then less important. And then you have to ask yourself, how am I going to get the more important words to get the notation that uh, enables us to understand that that word deserves stress? Okay, so here's the text. You were crucified, O Christ our God, and trampled death by death. You are one of the Holy Trinity, glorified with the Father 
and the Holy Spirit save us. Okay? So if I were to say, uh, you were crucified, O oh, Christ, our God, and trampled death by death, you are one of the Holy Trinity, glorified with the Father uh, and the Holy Spirit save us. Actually, in the case of the, that last phrase, I mean, there's, you know, it would be very hard to kind of massacre that because so many of those words deserve uh, stressing. But uh, I, I think you, you, you understand very clearly what I'm getting at. So, you know, to be able to convey meaning, you have to know which words need to be stressed. Now, I'm going to sing it according to the way in which we've set this text um, here on page 106. And uh, keep in mind that you're never going to get a perfect fit, so there were some real problems that we had to wrap our heads around, and um, the, the problem in, in one sense remains in some instances, but uh, what I'm going to do after singing this is sing to you another version, which will remain unnamed, because believe me, uh, I have too much respect for everybody out there who's tried to do this in the past to to want to be critical of anyone, but I just want to do this by way of comparison to give you a sense of what the issues are. So here, the um, text sings in the following way, and you can follow along by looking at page 106. <clears throat> you were crucified, O Christ our God, and trampled death by death. You are one of the Holy Trinity, glorified with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Save us. Profound apologies, I didn't do um, any um, gammas, as we say in Ukrainian. I, I didn't uh, prepare my voice to, to sing uh, this morning, but um, hopefully uh, you won't be <laughs> turned off too much by my uh, rendition of that. Now, hopefully uh, you can keep that melody uh, in mind. In fact, what I'm going to ask you to do is go back to, to page 106. So, Janet, if you can put up page 106 again, but this time, instead of singing what's on page 106, I'm going to sing to you another version that's um, out there that I, I think is probably still sung in, in, in some of uh, our parishes, some Ukrainian Greco-Catholic parishes in North America. And um, here we go. So, so listen to this, and as I say, I'm doing this just so that you can see um, how problems arise. I'm going to take it a couple of tones down to, to spare your ears. Okay. You were crucified, O Christ our God, and trampled death by death. You are one of the Holy Trinity, glorified with the Father, and the Holy, Holy Spirit save us. Now, um, if we can uh, get uh, away from the PDF, Janet, and um, I, uh, I, I don't want to flash up this other version because, as I say, I don't want to sound critical of anyone else, but um, if you were listening carefully, you'll notice that what happened is that conjunctions like and ended up being uh, accentuated when they obviously shouldn't be. So it ended up, uh, it's as if the, the texts were the following. You were crucified, O Christ our God, and trampled death by death. You are one of the Holy Trinity, glorified with the Father and the Holy, Holy Spirit. Save us. So, um, I'm going, to, I'm going to sing that again, and I, and I hope that uh, you understand. And this, this time, uh, it's, I'm just singing uh, without reference to what we have on page 106. So just follow along here, and, and I hope you'll, you'll, you'll see the, um, the issues. And, and I apologize for repeating this, but I, I think it's uh, important. I mean, sometimes people don't really hear it the, the first time. So... Um, mm -hmm. You were crucified, O Christ our God, and trampled death by death. Now, where did that come from? Why would anybody do that in, um, 
in transposing a, a melody that was intended for Church Slavonic to a text in English. Why would that happen? Well, very easy. The explanation is, is very simple. In Slavonic, it's smarti u smart po prav, right? Or smart u smart po dolav, or sometimes they even say smart u smart u smart po dolav, whatever, you know, smart u smart po dolav. Uh, you know, that's, that's not at stake here. It's the whole question of the fact that in Slavonic or Ukrainian, accenting smartiu or smartiu makes sense. In English, accenting and trample death by death doesn't make sense. Now, there are people who say, well, you have to maintain the integrity of the, the melody by doing that even in English. And the response is, no, this is chant. This is chant. This is not a chorale. It's not a metric hymn, okay, even though it has metric dimensions to it, but it is a chant. So to the extent that any chant has pickup notes, you have to be able to, to make the adjustment. And by the way, um, the, uh, something that, that I, I don't think I've mentioned uh, explicitly until now, but um, it's, it's the fact that in music, in music, the first beat of every measure gets the stress or, or, or the accent. So a simple rule of thumb is almost always, I mean, there's, there are nuances here as there are in almost anything, but in general, in general, it's... It, it is true that if you're looking at a measure of music and you want to know which note ends up getting a stress in that piece of music, it is the first note in any measure. So you're going to say to me, well, how, do, how, do, how does anybody know that uh, in this alternate version that you're singing, Father Peter, the word and ended up being stressed? Well, first you can hear it. I mean, even if you didn't have the music in front of you, you would know that um, that word is, is being stressed. And the reason it's being stressed is because it's written out as, as you know, musical notation, and it's the first note in that measure of music. Okay? The same thing happens later on. Um, so when we go down to glorified with the Father, glorified with the Father and the Holy, Holy Spirit, save us. Okay, so you see that there again, and the Holy Spirit, uh, that's the first note in that measure of music. So obviously it's going to end up being accented when, of course, uh, an English speaker is not going to accentuate, it's not going to stress the conjunction. The conjunction is there to get us to the word Holy Spirit. Okay? So um, that, I think, is something we will want to return to from time to time as we go through various pieces that are in this uh, Divine Liturgy book. Um, and I will tend to draw attention to those pieces of music whenever uh, the, the musical setting, as it is uh, found in this resource, departs from uh, the, the settings that uh, have really um, been sung in some cases for, for 35 years. Um, you know, as I, I've hinted before, sometimes you get so used to singing in a particular way that you don't even realize that the, there's a problem, but all you need is someone coming in from the side who simply knows uh, English and simply knows the, the, mu the, the rules of musical setting to say that's, that's the equivalent of, of, of broken English. So um, stay with us uh, next time in, in part eight. We'll be uh, moving on to some aspects of the, the third antiphon as well as the, the text box that gives you information about the, the various propers, the, the tropadian, kondakian, and, and prokimena uh, for uh, most Sundays of the year. Glory to Jesus Christ. Slava Jesus Christ.